most of my family's memories are along this river. When I hear about the stories that they would tell about back in the day, it would always be around the river and they were swimming in it, they had garden parties, they would always come together. When I think about that, I think of community. What this river meant to my people has always been community and coming together and being with one another and joy. I think the river's also in pain currently. I went on a canoe trip uh, about two summers ago. We could barely even breathe. We had to cover our faces. We couldn't swim in it. We can't even drink from it. And I find that there's an alignment between the two. My community is ill and my community is unable to gather like we used to as a family. And I think that really aligns with the fact that our river is not well. And if the river is not well, then our people are not well. When residential schools were created, there was, I think, two real big reasons. To separate our young people from the land and to disunite the family because they know we're stronger together and they know we, we govern ourselves as family, we govern ourselves in clans and community. It did its job to many of the families who are still facing the impacts today and this is what happened to my family. It brought my parents to both being homeless young people in Toronto and not necessarily having any family support, to be connected and to have a community and a family that they had wanted all their lives. This was what my mom wanted for me. They knew there was a home and there was a community back here just an hour away from Toronto that I could be a part of, that I could grow up within, and that I could know myself. And so they made the active decision to move back home. I come from Six Nations. Both my grandparents are from here. My grandma Kyuga Wolf Clan and my grandpa Mohawk Wolf Clan. And and I always say they didn't work out because we we're both Wolf Clan, but I, that's where I get my fiery spirit from. It's why I do the work I do, is because of the family and the community I come from, one of resistance and one that has really inspired me to want to take action in a way that would be revolutionary for our people. The 2006 Gunnestado land conflict changed the course of history for our community and how we do things in Six Nations. Our people in our traditional governance and leadership stood up and said, no, my family, my uncles and aunties and all my family were actually on the front lines when it came to this, but it was a month long standoff. The OPP came in and raided and shot at our people and caused major distress. something that really created a ripple effect, this land conflict of Gunnestado. I'm very privileged and lucky to grow up understanding what my obligation is as a Haudenosaunee woman and, and how I can fulfill that obligation. With our traditional leadership being raided by the RCMP in 1924 and having this new federal division of what is now known as the Band Council, putting settler structures within indigenous communities. This was the issue I think that this land conflict brought to light because who stood on the front line? It was our traditional our hereditary governance that we've had since time immemorial, since the Guyana Legoa, which is the great law of peace. 
who is the governance in Six Nations and who has leadership over the decisions that we really critically need to make in the community, especially when it comes to land and sovereignty. I really started to understand this when I was working at the Six Nations of the Grand River Development Corporation. We were working in community engagement. We had this hydro line, the Niagara Reinforcement Line, and I was the one working with the community and seeing what they wanted and hearing from them. And what I heard wasn't necessarily the best. A lot of hurt and anger because of the structures that are in place that have been oppressive historically and are continuing to be oppressive because they aren't necessarily being represented. I felt really lost for a while actually because I thought I was doing really awesome clean energy transition work which we do need these kinds of solutions and we need to look at how we can lower greenhouse gas emissions but at whose expense and who is being empowered by these projects and, and who is facing the impact. I went to university with these large questions and and really led me to continue in environmental and climate work, working in the university, working with other communities, looking at industrial health impacts, because I was now intrigued by how are these clean energy projects and industrial projects impacting our health as Indigenous peoples, and looking at health not only in a way of the physical, but the mental, emotional, spiritual, community, environmental, looking at health through a lens that is unique to our place. This is the work I started to do to understand that our health is so intimately tied to our sovereignty and our environments. And this is what a lot of these developers or projects do not understand. There have been at least 33 arrests now related to the land dispute on Mackenzie Meadows, a housing development in Caledonia. Six Nations has less than 5% of its original land base, and protesters say there are dozens of outstanding claims over lost land. In 2020, 50 people were arrested and our people were shot at with rubber bullets, and this erected a blockade on Highway 6 as well as on the railway and in the territory itself that was proposed to be developed known as Mackenzie Meadows. Protect the Track came out of 1492 Land Back Lane as a solution so our people wouldn't have to continue to be on the front lines. We look at land stewardship as not only obtaining that land and occupying it, which is at the center of the work we do because we don't want our lands to be developed, but by also enforcing our stewardship on these lands. Land defenders and people from our community alongside allies came together to plant and to really put our hands in the ground and connect with our agricultural side as Haudenosaunee people and bring that to this space as well. So as you can see throughout, you can see the orchard and the trees. The puppies and dogs here are able to live free and roam and <laughs> they have a pretty good life. When you look at Lambach and you look at these spaces, you're seeing orchards and you're seeing puppies and families and and people coming together. And when you have those relations, it can really be beautiful because what comes out of those relationships is joy, is creativity, because we're finally able then to be who we are and let all our guards down because we have each other and we have the land. From the dancing and the singing and the feasting, the laughter, the big anti-belly laughs, there's nothing like it. And when I hear that, that's what gives me hope, is to know this is what I'm fighting for, is this joy and this laughter that comes from my people and my communities and probably every other community in the world who have found in their trauma, they found joy.